I'm Annie Tian. I'm CEO of the Asian Innovations Group um, and then also the creator of the Gifto, the latest blockchain project for virtual gifting. I'm Kevin Abosh. I'm an artist uh, dealing with matters uh, of uh, identity, existence, and value. Uh, my latest project is called I Am A Coin. I had started this project called I Am A Coin that bridged physical artwork with virtual artwork through the blockchain. Um, and uh, Andy uh, saw this. From where? From from Hong Kong? Facebook. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he contacted me and said, uh, you know, we should collaborate on something because he has a virtual uh, gifting platform uh, and he thought there might be some interesting uh, potential for collaboration. And when I saw Kevin's art, I was like, wow, this is really cool stuff, right? Why don't we do something interesting and fun? And Valentine's Day is coming up. And I remember uh, also Kevin also took a picture of, of a potato as well. So something related to potato. A rose, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe in time, Valentine's Day, and um, we start started a conversation, and then we said, "Why don't we create something that is actually um, that really shows the full power of blockchain?" Right? Because as everyone knows, blockchain is a primary function currently is to hold value, to store value, like Bitcoin, right? And the reason why Bitcoin is made, was worth a lot of money is because everyone believes still believes that blockchain is legitimate. That, that Bitcoin, um, and an abstract a digital series of bytes that are stored on blockchain can be worth a lot of money. And we want to, but it's very abstract. So we kind of want to lend a, uh, a visual representation that everyone in the world has seen before, the rules. So that's kind of the, the genesis of the project. In this case, I think a lot of the very relevant figures in the world of crypto have got on board and, and we're sort of supporting the community for a good cause. The, uh, the proceeds go to Coder Dojo, uh, which is a global uh, open source platform for teaching young children how to code. Uh, so I think it was, uh, it was just a big rally to the community to get involved with something that was exciting. I think a lot of people in crypto uh, are, always, are looking for new use cases of the blockchain. Uh, all we ever hear about is cryptocurrency. Um, and of course, I'm interested as an artist in the intersection between art and technology. Uh, and uh, when, so when Andy approached me with this idea of doing something for Valentine's Day, uh, I thought, uh, well, what can we do? What is a sort of a universal symbol of love? Well, it was the rose. I had actually never even considered photographing a rose uh, up until that point. But the photograph of the rose uh, was, was, was the, only the, the, the starting point for the project because that's not actually what uh, we were asking collectors to take possession of. It was this token, this ERC-20 token on the blockchain that is essentially, it's a, it's a proxy for the photo. They don't actually get the, the photo. Uh, this is not about physical, this is about, about virtual uh, art. Uh, it's, it's something intangible. But as I like to say, um, some of the most precious things, uh, like love for instance, are intangibles. You, know, you can't really hang love up on your wall. So uh, I, think, I think it might be a little bit of a, of a, of a jump for people to uh, understand what it's, what it's like or why somebody would want to collect a piece of virtual art. Um, and, and it's very exciting, the discussion that ensues uh, after launching a project like this. And also for the, um, I think everyone thinks that uh, on the outside, it's a high price. Actually for the collectors, it's not. Because this is really the first time if you think about from a, from a purely crypto point of view, right? The reason why Bitcoin uh, values so much is because there's finite number of Bitcoins, right? And then the value will, everybody believes that it will increase as more and more people um, start to see the utility of a Bitcoin, which is storage value. Now, imagine if there's only one Bitcoin in the world, <laughs> only one, how much value would that be worth? I think that's a lot more than what currently uh, forever rose was so far. I mean, Valentine's Day. The, 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 the discourse that, that happens, I think, when you start considering how we ascribe value to things, what, what we value and what we don't for whatever reason, a lot of it has to do with general consensus. Uh, so I think in that sense, there's a lot of commonality between this world of cryptocurrencies, which I don't fully follow, and the art world. 
uh, when I've sold work in the past for sums of money that caused the public to scream, how is that possible? How can something like that be so valuable? But it's the same conversation around yeah. things like Bitcoin. There's nothing backing it. Why is it $16,000 a coin? Yes, exactly. And I think that, that that's really showcased that, again, um, the power of blockchain. The blockchain is a virtual concept that built on technology. And already the blockchain is already carrying $500 billion worth of uh, value. And it's, in, and it's uh, agreed upon by the world, by 20, 30, 40, 50 million people, that blockchain has that kind of value. And the, so, yeah, sorry. So, actually, so in perspective, the Forever Rose as a first a single token ever issued, I think that this is why the collectors um, have purchased it. I think it's grossly, uh, grossly uh, undervalued. <laughs>It's actually technical part is actually very very straightforward, just like any art format. The 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 art is not in how difficult it takes to create the art. The art is that the art itself, the artwork itself, is ERC twenty token, most common token in all of blockchain world. Pretty much everyone can create one, and it's divisible into ten pieces. So the so the one decimal point, these ten pieces, there will only forever be one token with ten pieces. And the 10 pieces now belong to 10 individual collectors who then are free to do whatever they please with that piece of token. That's the artwork that they now own. And the token doesn't exist in physical form, of course. It's also virtual. A lot of people hear the word token or coin and they assume it's something that they can hold on to. We think that, that that's a, a um, always it's it's in, it's involved it's in like any new artwork any new movement it happens as a result of an evolving conversation. We were talking about at first just starting only one, but over 150 people applied to buy the rose, and many of our friends. And you know, one thing you don't want to do you don't want to do say no to friends. So uh, and so we decided why not make this a community thing because the the spirit of blockchain. Is actually a community. The blockchain exists because it's consensus among the community that Bitcoin is worth this much. So naturally, we said, why don't we just divide divide the um, uh, the token up? And yeah. of course, the, the natural division is by decimal point, therefore ten. So yeah, it speaks it speaks to the higher purpose of blockchain. It is moving power from from a few to many, uh, and I think that's something we're going to see uh, increasingly over the next few years. Is power shift from traditional institutions to uh, the people. Uh, they now own so the artwork is a token. If they have they if they, it have a wallet address, it will be shown on, on EtherScan, and they own that zero point one token completely. Now. And when we talk about ownership and possession. I think we're customized uh, uh, to thinking of it as, as holding something physical, something maybe you could even put on the wall. But this is different. This is about partaking in an experience in the project, and it's virtual. Um, so uh, it's important to, to remember that that ownership is, is essentially its participation. It's ownership which can be proved, uh, proven on, on the blockchain uh, through the code, uh, but uh, which is another utility of the blockchain that. Uh, it could be very helpful uh, for artists in the future. For sure, uh, I think it's going to, at the very least, you have uh, the practical aspects of, of tracing work, authenticity, provenance, um, but that's at the very least. And then of course there's the other side where the technology actually becomes part of the art and facilitates the art itself. And as the blockchain, it's only nascent technology right now, as it evolves, uh, the capabilities are, are, go are, going to, are going to expand in ways that I can't really predict myself. Yeah, I mean, already, uh, as I would talk about before, there are already s several blockchain efforts to help artists have a more, transparency, more transparency, more um, around how their artwork are owned by individuals around the world. 
and also open up the uh, for uh, the 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 nature the divisible nature of blockchain, the transparent ownership actually open a new way for more people around the world to own a piece of art. So, for example, for us, the rose is only ten pieces, but you can imagine in the future an art can be can, can be divided into a hundred, a thousand pieces, and more and more people can participate in the, in the the actual joy of actually right. owning a piece of art. So I think that's what a blockchain uh, uniquely suited towards. I created 10 million pieces of virtual art called Iama coins, and they're, they're divisible to 18 decimal places. I mean, that's easily enough to put a fraction of an Iama coin into the hands of everybody on Earth. So yeah, it's, it's pretty overwhelming. Right, exposure to, I think, the, authentic, uh, the ability to authenticate on a blockchain naturally, that would definitely help a lot. There'd be no, mm, no loss of documentation, there'd be no loss of proof, previously with paper-based or even electronic-based like, uh, documents before. And number two, I think that, the uh, again, the divisible ownership is a huge, that would change the, how our ownership is done. And also the... The fact that uh, the token that we, we in, in the art blockchain projects, the term is called tokenizing an art. So create an uh, create a representative of the art in tokens allows the token themselves to also be freely exchangeable mm -hmm. as well. So actually, so it, it, it changes the um, art as an instrument for investment as well. A aside from the abstraction from the physical, there's really n nothing new in the sense of you know, we had we had mechanical means to create multiples. Then we've had digital uh, technology to create multiple editions. And this is, it's still in the digital domain, but now we have the ability to uh, create these virtual uh, editions uh, and track the divisibility, the fractional ownership of, 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 a, of a piece of work. And in the near future, I think you're going to be able to actually embed the digital work into uh, the blockchain uh, to, to, to add further context to it. Any artwork is single. There's no, uh, um, there, there, there is unique, uh, the Forever Rose is unique. The only Forever will be one token forever that lives on the blockchain. But this already opens up many, many new ideas on how we can create more unique things, more unique artworks and experiences and conversations on the blockchain. And also, this is not this is the beginning of the of the Ferrero Roche project. Part of the artwork is actually the conversations we're having right now, actually, yeah. to stimulate uh, deeper discussions around crypto, blockchain, art, and value. I think those conversations are part of the art of work that is ongoing and also expanding. Yeah, for me it's a continuum uh, that goes back to my earliest work up to the present and then past me, you know, into, uh, into what other people will do. So yeah, I see it as sort of as a continuum. We knew that we wanted to give the proceeds to charity uh, and Andy and I, our first thoughts were around children. It just happens to be that I know the people behind the Coder Dojo Foundation, and I know that uh, the money they receive uh, goes towards their programs, open source framework for teaching children how to code uh, all over the world. I, I can't even think of a country that doesn't have a dojo, or two, or three, or four. And uh, it's just very positive. It seemed appropriate for the project, yeah. because uh, these, these, these young kids who are learning how to code are going to be the ones leveraging the blockchain That's uh, right. further down the road. Kingman Ledger is one of the um, uh, uh, newest projects here in, in Korea, and there's also the first non-profit uh, uh, blockchain in initiative. I think that it's, na it's natural that we, this is also one of the impact of the Forever Rose project. Many actually projects and the folks have reached out to us and, and expressing not only to create new art, but also to create new creative initiatives to benefit uh, charities. Because I think that the um, in the crypto world, 
there's enormous wealth being created over the last few years. And I think that uh, this, is also, this is also our call to action that more of the wealth being uh, given or spent on initiatives that really benefit society in general, not just stored or transfer within the crypto community by itself. I think that this is just a simple uh, beginning, I think, of many collaborations between art, the crypto, and nonprofit. For me, art is activism, and I use my art to shine light into dark places. Sometimes that that that's that's to bring light to those that are disenfranchised, those who are suffering injustice, uh, global issues that uh, that uh, address uh, how we're treating the planet. Um, so invariably, my work butts up against charity. Uh, I have my hands full with this I Am A Coin project, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, they just go hand in hand. I'm, I'm thrilled to be back in Korea. It's a, it's a place that has uh, particular uh, interest for me. I grew up in a part of uh, Los Angeles that is now called Koreatown, uh, K-Town. Uh, it wasn't when, when I was living there. Uh, my earliest memories of friends are, uh, are, are Korean. I learned how to make kimchi when I was seven. Uh, I played tennis on an all-Korean tennis team. <laughs> so it's just, I love Korean food. So this is, uh, and also I thought it was especially appropriate to be here for this uh, launching um, because uh, the, Crypto is such a relevant topic in this country, uh, more so than a lot of other places. Yeah, same as me. I mean, we have a um, strong team here in Korea, right? So for my company and also my blockchain project, Korea is a, uh, in a center of live streaming, gaming, crypto, and I think that, and also entertainment. And I, we, uh, so it's natural for us to be based here, right? So for, for, to, to announce the Fabric Rules here, and uh, we hope that this is just the, again, this call for action, right? We have a, on our website, have a call to any viewers uh, to give us their video uh, on, uh, view on what they think about the project, good or bad, positive or negative, to participate in a global conversation about how crypto and then blockchain are changing the world and their fears, their hopes, and, and anything they want to express to global audience. And we hope to follow this up with, um, in the future, uh, actual exhibitions in galleries around the world about the project and the conversation that it generates.